And um, actually, I think this is going to be an epic episode. Um, Matt's been drinking for the past three, four hours here. He's had a rough day, so we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, but tonight we have um, Facebook ads expert um, and real estate agent for a number of years here, Anthony Mann, with us uh, tonight. We're really, really pumped about this. Uh, I think this is going to be a great episode. You don't want to miss this and definitely stay Super till the end. Uh, really pumped about this. We're going to talk um, about a lot of interesting topics tonight. Um, and um, Matt, you want to do your little bit while, because uh, you typically jump in. I know, yeah. So if you guys are watching live, hashtag live in the comments below. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay in the comments below. Also, let us know your, where you're watching from and what time is it there? Because I want to know who's the most dedicated. Not that you're not dedicated if you don't watch it at nine o'clock at night, but I mean, you're not as dedicated as the guy who wakes up. And we're we're not motivating anybody tonight to uh, hashtag anything because uh, <laughs> last week, Anthony, if you don't, I, I don't know if you saw the show last week, but I wanted to make a point that people are motivated by money, so I gave away some gift cards. For okay, <laughs> but you never know, right? You could end up doing that. Yeah, I mean, oh, you, you never know. That's right. You never know. Maybe at the end of the show, you know. Um, yeah. Stuck around yeah, for the gotta whole see, time. Gotta see how much more Matt drinks, you know? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, listen, Anthony, we're, uh, you know, really excited to have you on. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, typically, uh, you know, the way this show goes uh, is uh, we have our guests drink as much as possible. And uh, then at the end of it, we still are your secrets. So <laughs> hopefully uh, you know, this goes the way we want it to go. Uh, but uh, cheers. And uh, thanks for having us. Uh, cheers, man. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yes. Uh, Matt, what uh, what you got going on over there? Water? All right, I got. Uh, where's my whiskey? All right. <laughs> He's already yeah. lost it. Uh, <laughs> fireball. So we'll, we'll, we'll just get fireball. into this. Um, but uh, yeah, listen. If you're just joining <laughs> right now, uh, Anthony Man is with us uh, tonight, um, and uh, around ten o'clock, we're gonna have a, a really good. Uh, I think we're gonna announce something here. So stick around for a little while. Uh, this should be a, a, a really good uh, announcement. Uh, some of you already know about this. But listen, Anthony, let's get started here. Um, excited to have you on. You've got a ton of experience on not just Facebook marketing, but real estate in general. You've been in yeah. this business for a really, really long time. You yeah. and I have chatted for years now. Yep. Uh, it, it feels. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just let you uh, jump right into it. Let us know who yeah. you are. And, uh, yeah. let, so, um, let us know what's up. Yeah. So you know, guys, uh, so I got into the uh, real estate business right out of college. I graduated school in 2007. I got out of school in 2007. And uh, as you guys know, in 2008 was the worst downturn in a real estate market ever, like literally the past hundred years. Um, so I was, you know, I'd gotten my license and I was, you know, doing everything I could. I was trying to sell houses and I was feeling out commercial and rentals. I was kind of trying to figure out really what was what was going to be my, my spot in the real estate world, 2008 rolled around. And literally it was absolutely terrible. What happened, you know, like I live on Long Island. So we got us, we got hit especially hard during the recession. Um, and literally I'd be driving around and there'd be, you know, vacant buildings. And I, I quickly realized that selling single family homes was simply just not going to work. Um, it just, there wasn't enough business going around, you know, people were losing money and it was a complete mess. So I was where were you located up, at the time? I'm sorry. I was on Long Island in New York. So literally oh, okay. 30, 40 minutes outside of the city. Yep. Um, and you know, we, the city got hit hard enough, but you know, that trickles all the way out. Um, and obviously, you know, across the country, there was, there was a complete foreclosure crisis. And I realized that if I want to make money in real estate, that the only place we're going to be able to do that is in the foreclosure world. Uh, the problem was the youngest guy doing foreclosures on Long Island was probably in his mid forties. Um, and I had no idea how to get started, right? Like there was 15, 20 guys that had all the listings. Um, and literally I was just on the phone every day calling banks and calling asset managers. Um, and I'll never forget my first foreclosure listing. I, I literally called this guy. I want to say every day for six straight months. Oh man. And yeah. And like, it was to the point where like, you know, we call ID the whole deal. Like he'd pick up the phone and be like, Anthony, listen, I don't have anything for you today. Like he knew, I, he knew I was calling. He knew it was me. Um, and one day he picked up the phone and he's like, all right, Anthony, listen, he's like, I'm going to give you one shot. This other broker, I'm not going to use his name fucked up. He's like, I'm going to give you one shot in 30 days to get this thing sold. I was like, oh my God. I was like, awesome. So literally got the property listing, went on the property, took the pictures, put it on the market, negotiated the price with the bank. And seven days later, I got an offer and I sold it. Okay. And, uh, you know, it took like 30 days to close, which was fine with, I sold it, you know, inside of the 30 days, the listing agreement he gave me for. Was, 
were these foreclosures or short sales? No, so these were strict foreclosures. So bank okay. already owned the property. Um, and, you know, I was just dealing with the bank. I didn't have to deal with any people. It was, you right. know, a numbers game. They were asking X price for it as long as I got close enough. That was it. I wound up selling, I think, four asking the price. Um, and literally, it propelled my foreclosure career. Uh, so over the next 10 years, uh, we sold well over 1,000 properties in the foreclosure world. Uh, and it, it, was a, it was an insane. Well over 1,000 properties? Yeah thousand properties yeah we they still sell them to this day wow. um and the the real great part about it is it's a relationship business right so yeah. once you have the relationship with the bank and with that asset manager if they get a listing in your area you just get an email and it says you have a new listing so yeah. no more calling, like it's a totally different world of real estate right but i think a lot of people like you you say it no so nonchalant like we did a thousand deals over the next you know, 10 years, like that's a hundred deals a year. It was, it was insane how many deals we were doing. I, I, I was working, uh, one, one year we did almost 200 properties in one year. Um, yeah. that was the craziest thing. I mean, we were literally, you know, selling four houses a week. Um, it was, it was crazy. And the crazy part for me was like, you were almost embarrassed to tell people how well you were doing because 90% of people in 2012, 2011 weren't doing well right? People were really struggling. Like people still were unemployed from the recession that was going on. Yeah. And we were selling all these properties and it was like, I was really happy, right? I wanted to jump for joy, but it's almost like people, you'd meet other people in real estate. They'd be like, oh man, really tough market. And I'd be like, yeah, really tough market right now where, you know, I was getting all the listings and I was like, you know, I'm doing fantastic right now. I'm not really feeling your pain. But you were one of few, right? Because a lot of people tried to get into this foreclosure thing. They couldn't break in. I got, when I tell you, I got luck on the first person to tell you, I mean, I, I'm a persistent guy. If I want something, I'm going to go after it. And no joke, it took me six months to get that listing. I, I didn't make a penny for six months. I was on the phone every day, different banks, just trying to get in the door. Like, give me, give me some opportunity. And that phone call that day, right place, right time, right guy had the listing, was pissed at another broker, knew who I was. I was a pain in his, in his ass. And he literally just gave me the listing, said, you got 30 days to do it. And it now, and, and as soon as you sell that property, he's your reference, right? Now you go to another bank, like, well, what have you done before? Well, go call him. He'll tell you how great I am, right? And now he got the reference and they're like, all right, we'll give you a shot. We'll give you a shot. Next thing you know, you have 10, 20 accounts and literally emails rolling in. I mean, there was a point where, you know, so there were two major companies that like are the asset management platforms called ResNet and Equator. Yep. Um, and they're still out there today. And literally yeah, all the things were just on the platforms, right? So once you're there, you, you just get emails. Like these asset managers just assign them to you. So you get an email every day. There was a point where we had like 200 and change properties in inventory that were just, you know, they were, the people were still in them. They were getting evicted or we were, you know, they had to fix, fix whatever to them before they went to the market. So we had a huge backlog log of inventory for a while. Um, and it was, it was great. We had like, you know, 20,000 investors on our investor list at a point. And it was just, it was insane. It was, it was a crazy, crazy ride. Um, and then in 2014, um, I'll actually never forget this day. I was, I was at an open house in Dix Hills and, uh, Dix Hills is a really nice area on Long Island. Um, and the property was about 40% below market value. And I go to this, you know, go to the open house. I'm all excited. I have my piece of paper and my clipboard and, uh, you know, you go to an open house, people sign in. Right. So I knew I was going to get a ton of investors that day and no joke, like, 50, 60 people came in an hour. And I only ran open houses for an hour at the time. So I was like, I know it's going to be busy. I can't do this for three hours. I want everybody to come in really, really quick. And I was like one of the, the original guys, like not the original guys to do it, but like one of the only guys on Long Island who did strict one hour open houses. Like after an hour, yeah. doors closed, we're out of here. Yeah. So we have 50, 60 people to come and I'm on Long Island Expressway. I'm coming back home and I'm, I'm driving. I got a, a car at the time and I got the windows down and no joke, like an act of God this piece of paper comes off the clipboard straight out the window while I'm doing 70 miles an hour in the Long Island Expressway. And so now I'm going, right? I'm just going and I see this, is just right? It goes right out the window. And I'm like, oh my God. And you can't stop, right? You're doing 70 on the expressway. It's nothing you can do. So I'm like, I can't believe this just happened. So I get home and I'm like, what am I going to do? You know what? It's fine. If, if uh, you know, these people really want the house, they're going to contact me. The investors know I have it. It's going to be okay. And I'm sitting there at night. And I'm like having a drink. And I'm still like upset about it. And I'm like, why aren't I using fucking technology? Like I was, you know, like I was a 26 year old guy at the time. I'm like, why am I using a piece of paper and a pen? So I literally developed AM Open House because of that 
instant, right? That that propelled me. And it was March um, of that year. And by July of that same year, I had launched an open house management platform. There's a couple on the market, but I didn't love them. And uh, so I developed this app. And within three years, we had about 125,000 users on it. Uh, you, so it was, okay. you developed AM Open House? Yep, AM Open House. I mean, you could Google it right now. The website's actually yeah. done right now. There's a long story behind it, but uh, the website's actually down right now. The app works fine. Well, because uh, it was that one or uh, Open Home Pro or the two, right? So Open Home Pro was my major competitor at the time. Yeah. They had about 35,000 agents using it. Uh, we I think I used them. that a couple times for Open yeah. Houses. Yeah, I mean, you if you did, then awesome. I mean, we, we surpassed them in about 18 months of, of us launching. We surpassed their user base, and then we just really just exploded. Um, and it was it was a great ride. And then following that was, you know, actually going into business for running ads for other people. You know, throughout that whole time, I was running Facebook ads for myself. You, know, you really only run Facebook ads for, I think they came out with the ads in 2011 or 2012. So, um, you know, it's really like the past, past eight years or so. Um, and, you know, I've been running ads really since the beginning. Like, I remember getting like, any clicks and penny leads like regularly <laughs> because yeah. nobody was advertising right the big brands were advertising ford and coca-cola and this and that but nobody was advertising on like a local level yep. uh, so it, you know those those were really the days of facebook advertising oh yeah um, and yeah so you know a couple years open ago, her 50 cent home emails you can't <laughs> even imagine like <laughs> The cool part was it was like when the advertising came out, nobody really like people were really pissed, number one. But number two, like they didn't quite know, they didn't really realize that it wasn't a post from one of their friends, right? Because they were so used to years of the only post they see are their friends' posts. So when it became ads, it was like, oh, what's this? Let me click on it. So the I mean, when I tell you the lead cost was it was ridiculous at the time. Yeah, I I I personally think that that's kind of where Messenger is right now, is the same place as when uh, newsfeed ads were introduced. Yeah, I mean, I have my own issues with messenger bots, especially for real estate. Um, yeah. I, think, I think in some ways they are fantastic, right? Customer service, um, quick, you know, <coughs> home eval or something like that, but really quick. I have my struggle with bots is people try to use them as like email follow-up campaigns where like for the next six months, I'm going to get a message from you every morning. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like that's not why I interacted with your bot. Yep, exactly. <laughs> well, I think they also. Um, everybody's have asking: Is the AM in open uh, in AM open house for Anthony Mann? Yeah, so it was kind of a play on it, right? So it was it was AM for Anthony Mann, but also it was like a morning open house, right? Most agencies do their open houses from like eleven to two or twelve to three, so it's kind of a play on both. Um, but yeah, I mean, the ego in me forced me to put AM in front of open house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! That's yeah, so. Awesome. So you, like, yeah, so that's my story in a nutshell. <laughs> yes, you're uh, using cool Facebook story. ads for your own business. I'm sorry, say that one more time. You were using Facebook ads for your own brokerage. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I had my father on the brokerage until 2000. 2011 something like that mm -hmm. um but yeah so you know basically when i when i went we, we all went off on our own um when i did that i started running them for my own team right the people working with me for my own mm -hmm. properties and this and that yeah it was all for you know for me at the time and, and for years it was just for me i was just like i figured out how to do it and i was just running ads for me because i was like this is really cheap i didn't want to put ads on like you know in the paper and where everybody else was um i remember like calling like the uh, the local paper and they wanted like I don't know, like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars for the month, and like it wasn't that I could afford it at the time. I was like, "How am I justifying fifteen hundred dollars to put this property in the paper?" By the time it goes in the paper, I'm probably going to have a, an investor for it already. Like it just didn't. I, I couldn't make sense of it on on doing it right. So I was like, "There's a better way for this." <laughs> I put one property in the paper ever, and it was it was the one rule that she had that was the only way I was going to get that listing. Um, and well, I was that's like. Fair. <laughs> All right, I'll put it in the paper. You got to put it in the paper in that time. You got to put it in the paper. Yeah. So, so that's cool. So, like a question. So, what's that? Oh, I said you looked like you had a question. Oh, uh, well, I had one earlier, but I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. But um, yeah, I mean, basically, Dave, Dave here. Um, hey, Dave, how's it going? Dave basically says, yeah, you know, part of the problem with the messenger objective is getting people to go through the questions, especially on yep. the real estate side, right? Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, I think messenger kind of does have a place. Uh, Let's ask, are people, are you guys using messenger in your in your ads right now? Are you running lead forms or landing pages? <laughs> are you running lead forms, landing pages, or messenger? I know Matt is. <laughs> So I know I know you're doing a shit ton of chatbots right now. 
He's oh. loving the chatbots. Uh, yeah, for some oh, other stuff. So yeah. let me ask you, Matt, how are you using the chatbots right now? Like, what are you seeing that's effective in, in the marketing you're doing? Like, what, what are you getting from it? Well, I so, think that, like, typical real estate, you know, lead generation, I think chatbot has a place on the follow-up side of things. Okay. And not sort of, like, there's been a lot of testing that, um, that our team has done, um, especially, like, Zach and, and Al have done quite a bit of testing, hundreds of thousands of leads through chatbots the most effective thing they've seen is uh, basically training an agent to send out very, um, you know, like market reports or events that are going on in the neighborhood, you know, and just stuff that's not canned, like, and so that you keep the people engaged, right? But definitely not for, you know, people are trying to use chatbots now to, you know, book appointments. We, like, and we're testing them, like, I'm not going to lie, we're, you know, yeah. like we're testing them just to see what they can do. And, uh, but, you know, a lot of people are relying on them to, to, you know, book appointments, convert leads, things like that. And at the end of the day, I think we're all, um, uh, well, at least the three of us here and a lot of other marketers I've spoken to, I think, you know, the best, best way to follow up with the lead is really pick up the phone try to convert them over the phone, you know, build that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Or at least get, get, get a text out to them as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the options with, uh, with chatbots is actually getting the name email or well, you obviously get name, right. getting email <laughs> phone number as well. Uh, quickly up front. Right. If you get them up front, then everything else is gravy. Um, but the, the difficult part is getting them up front, getting the lead to go into your CRM, regardless of whether or not they answer or not. And, and thankfully right. uh, Al has nailed that down. But, uh, or yeah, Al or Pat, whatever we call him. <laughs> Pat, Al, yeah. Al, Pat. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about the history there with him, but anyways, there's yeah, a reason why it's Al now. now. <laughs> but so, yeah, I think yeah. that like you get that right away and then everything else is gravy. And I think if you can build that list up, um, my theory, and I haven't put it into play as far out as I'd like to, but my theory is that over time, you're going to be able to do things like um, special special offers for home evaluations or uh, one of the things that we used to send out uh, as a team was, what was it like uh, a free home inspection coupon? If you look at houses this weekend, stuff like that. I think you could do that with broadcast in the future. If you have a couple thousand sure. people on the bot yeah. and, and end up getting some, uh, some people in the office. Well, and and very, very similar to what you would do with email. You yeah, know? exactly. Right. Like you send out notifications for, you know, maybe an open house this weekend, or you send right. out a notification for a coupon on whatever you got. And we see people now building systems for text messaging to do that, right? Like getting, once you have yeah, their that's number, like big. The, bro the broadcast text is huge because uh, the stat on, I think is like 97 or 98% of text messages are open within the first two minutes of them reaching someone's phone. So like, that's a huge number, right? So like me, I know my, my, I think my biggest problem with chatbots is that the only reason why I open the chat bot is because I want to get rid of the notification, <laughs> right? <Yep. laughs> like <laughs> That's my biggest issue with them. It's like, if it wasn't so obnoxious, like that stupid thing up there, when I was ready, maybe I would look at it, but literally the only reason why I go into it is to get rid of that, right? So I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree because I, like, I, I don't know how many things I'm subscribed to and I get them all the time, you know, like unsubscribe lives that are coming on. Yeah, like I just, I, I see it, click it, get rid of it. I don't even read them. <laughs> I, see, I, I stay on a couple of them that have like deals, right? Deals that I'm interested in. Like That's that's the difference, right? Like, you know, there was one I was signed up to was, um, uh, I don't know, they were they were selling backpacks and shit. Like, I don't know. I thought that like their their sequences were really, really good. Mm -hmm. Basically, I signed up, it was 50% off the backpack and then, three, four days later, it was 10% off, like an additional 10%, right? And I don't even know how I got into that thing, but um, like that sequence to me made sense, right? But for, you know, other things, I, I don't know. And I, you know, I always wonder how many people were annoying with our own chatbot through the group. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and I mean, we've got, yeah, I know with our group chat. Sorry, guys, if we're, if we're doing a show live, uh, and by the way, we got to get our likes and hearts and, and faces up. We got like seven of those. Come on, pump those up or we're done talking about real estate. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. And guys, but, if you uh, have some questions here, man, we got the Anthony Manley will. on the call. So um, questions down below. And um, I'm sure uh, we're going to talk about some some cool stuff here, I think. Um, yes. Specifically about Facebook ads. You do. I have a question. All right, let's do it. Anthony, you know where I'm going with it. I know exactly where you're going with it. <laughs> you and I were discussing the uh, the kitchen pictures as your ad picture yep so we were having having a healthy adult debate about it <laughs> yes like i'm just i'm so blown away that like you are you're seeing there's more intent but like, <laughs> knowing you 
after just, you know, a short conversation, like you, you obviously know your stuff. So like, how did you, cause well, actually give us the premise of why kitchen, uh, kitchen posts. Sure. Actually, why don't we back up a little bit because maybe some of the people that are watching here don't actually understand where you're right. They weren't, maybe they weren't there for that post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this ad that I basically give to anybody. And, and, uh, my, if Chris is watching, if you want to post it actually in the, in the chat for people to download. So it yeah. is one of the, one of the ads that I basically will give to anybody who's like, you know, I've never made a Facebook ad before for real estate. Mm -hmm. Like, can you give me an example of one? You could click on the link. You could load it right into your ad account. Um, it, you don't, there's no cost or anything. Just It's just a sample ad for you, okay? And in this ad, it is a download of list of homes ad. So a very basic, you know, ad that you've heard to do a hundred times. And in the ad, my picture for it is a luxury kitchen. Mm -hmm. So someone posted in the group about, I'm getting like, like, I don't know, they were getting like $15 leads or 20, it was like really expensive leads for it. Yeah. He was like, what am I doing wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. And so Matt chimed in, he was like, get rid of the kitchen picture, put the front of the <laughs> And I'm like, like, actually, actually, Anthony's like, like, that's my ad. I'm like, way. actually, Matt, that's my <laughs> ad and leave that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so what is the prep? Like, so the kitchen picture, I'm still like baffled by it. So. So there's two parts to, I think, okay. why it has the highest intent. Number one, when people are looking to purchase a home, the most important room that they look at in that home is the kitchen. So when you give them the kitchen of that home up front, if they don't like it, they're not going to click through. Okay. So if okay. you put another, another picture right front of the house, backyard, whatever it is, one of the reasons why they're going to click through that ad is because they want to get to the kitchen picture. Okay. Because that's, what's going to make a lot of their buying decision for and kitchens and bathroom sells homes, right? Like we, everybody knows that it's just what yep. it is. So we kind of go up front with it. The other part I think is that, and, and not to say there's any other way, women are naturally drawn to kitchens and they have a major influence in the purchase decision. So when you get a lead from somebody on a kitchen photo, whether it's a man or a woman or, mm -hmm. or, whatever gender you want to call it. Okay. Whatever, whenever you get that lead, it's higher intent because it's something that's that they've been drawn to about mm -hmm. that kitchen. Um, and you being in real estate, like you totally get that, right? Like first room, everybody goes to right to the kitchen, right? Nothing else matters until they like the yeah, kitchen. pretty much. It's like, we got to see what this kitchen looks like. All right. The right. bathrooms are outdated, but the kitchen's nice. We can deal with it. Right. Like, yeah, I could redo the bathrooms. Right. But like the kitchen immediately in their head, they're like, oh, I can't redo this whole kitchen. This <laughs> exactly. So, um, so yeah, we've so just, we've just you know? hundreds well, of thousands through it. And it's just always been the high, not that other ones don't work. Right. We've always found the highest intent being, and, and listen, they're going to be higher cost, right? Naturally, because you're shoving people away that don't like that, that kitchen. Right. So you're not going to get, you know, you might get a third of the leads, but I'm fine with that. I'd rather, my personal, the way I look at it, I get less leads that are higher quality than mm -hmm. more leads that are less quality. So it's just always how I've looked at it. So how have you measured the intent? Because that was my my question that I was curious with. So we're really kind of restrictive with not only the people we work with, but also mm -hmm. the way our our leads are processed and the agents that we, that, you know, the kind of the, the flow that, that works with them, right? So we, we do use an ISA and we have, you know, we, we basically have a lead that goes into it, right? So we are right. able, we're, we're able to kind of gauge based on our ads, what people are responding to. When are people re-engaging? How long does it take them to re-engage? How many conversations are happening? How many appointments are happening from that? Um, so it's just, it's a, it's just a big data play, right? So we've just tested it over time and we've been able to see it now before we even signed on or partnered with this ISA, we used to simply just ask, you know, people like, you know, where did you, where, where are you seeing the best leads come in? Did they come in from, you know, our general ads or were they specific property ads? And we would go back, we would, we would look through it, right? We would figure out, okay, what ads did we run? How did we get better leads? When did they come in? Why did they come in? And we kind of just, you know, we ran the data for ourselves until we were able to kind of streamline it a little further. Hmm. So what do you typically see for cost on those? And like, what do you have the numbers on as far as like the, uh, the close rate for the differences or, or not? Yeah, so with I was you? actually, I was talking to somebody yesterday. So okay. we, through our ISAs right now, we're getting about a 20% appointment rate, mm -hmm. uh, which is an obnoxious number in real estate. Right. Um, so literally for, you know, every 10 leads that come in, where two of those people are actually making an appointment to go see it. 
uh, or go see a home with the realtor. So whether it's the buy or sell, which is, again is an obnoxious rate. Um, but with that being said, the lead cost is significantly higher, right? We're seeing between seven and twelve dollars for a lead cost, uh, mm-hmm. between ten and thirteen in California, um, and it really depends, you know, like so some of the even higher. I know that we're, we're, we want to talk about some motivated seller stuff. Um, and depending on those kind of ads, I mean, we've seen leads up to $25, $30, but they're again, higher intent leads, right? Like a realtor in LA doesn't care about paying $30 a lead. If every $300 they spend, they're getting two appointments out of it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a million dollar purchase. Yeah, and, that, and that's a really important thing, right. To think, to, I mean, I think part of it is that a lot of the marketers are really focused on CPLs, right. So, Completely. I see it all in every group all the time. It's all they yeah. care about. I yeah. Mean, I mean, we, we do it all the time, right. We're always like, we, and people are drawn to that. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's how we market ourselves. It's how we, you know, it's like, Hey, look, leads for seven cents a lead, you know, like right. last time, last time Matt posted one of his chat pots, we're like, getting I saw you at zero cents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like this bad bot. shit, motherfucker. Yeah. Like let's, <laughs> let's hope we can scale gonna this cost. <laughs> Somebody's always gonna be like, but will this cost continue? Yeah, the free leads, yeah, they'll they'll just keep. Or then the next question is, what's your conversion rate? (laughs) Right. Right. Started the ads today. You. (laughs) I started it 15 minutes ago. I got lucky. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, so I I think part of it is that the marketers are focused on the CPLs, and so are the agents, right? Like, you know, like what's the cost per lead? Like, what can I expect? What you can expect? You know, 100 leads per month or 200 leads based on the type of budget you're spending. And based on that, you can expect a certain conversion rate. So I think that's part of the issue. And, and in your case, I think you probably, you, you probably have an easier time because I would as well have an easier time positioning a higher intent lead saying, listen, you're not going to get 250 leads this month. You're going to get 75, but out of those 75, this many will convert. Right. Right. Um, and I, and that's an important part of it is, you know, I, I you know, Matt and I, um, a lot of times, especially with some of our clients and, and uh, you know, we're always about generating as many leads as possible because we are doing the follow-ups. So it's like fill the pipeline, you know, just get them in. We'll do the follow-ups and we'll try to convert them, right? It doesn't matter if it's 600 leads or 300 leads, whatever it is, we'll just do all the follow-ups and call them, right? But in a case where an agent's doing all the follow-ups, mm-hmm. getting those higher intent leads is really important. So you let me ask you this. So with what you guys are doing, do you charge your clients like a per lead cost for your ISA or you, you guys are including that in what you're doing? It's all, it's all included. Oh, okay. So yeah. for us, we take that totally different, right? We're like on top of your lead cost, it's also going to cost you an additional $8 per lead that comes in for ISAs to handle it, right? So not only do we position and say, listen, you're going to get le- less leads, but also every time you get a lead in, whatever that cost was, it's going to cost you eight bucks more than that for us to follow up for exactly, you. Right? Yeah. So for them, they're like, all right, well, as long as you get me the best quality leads, that's fine, right? They don't want 3000 leads in their pipeline. They just want ones, like you said, that are gonna convert. Yeah, right. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. No, so, and it would be it would be interesting. I think, you know, if we had an opportunity well, to test out that picture, yeah. um, that, that would be cool. We should yeah, absolutely. I'm excited, to, <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see the ad when uh, Chris posted, or if you wanna post it after this. Uh, Chris um, posted it. That's uh, did he? Okay, cool. Yeah, so I want to see Yeah, yeah. It's awesome, there, so. awesome. And then let's see here. Uh, do we have any other questions? Well, let us know. Guys. Questions. What are your thoughts? Thoughts? Has anyone ever, has anyone out there tested a kitchen photo? Yes or no? Let us know. Have you tested it? And what were your results? So I've done a lot of like the majority of the homes lists that I've done in the past um, until I met Matt. And we started getting lazy and started putting single images together. I used to do a lot <laughs> because that's what it's like. Let's just throw up one image. Yeah, it's totally fine. Just one. Leads. <laughs> but, um, so I used to do a lot of carousel, right? And it was oh, it's it's always been front of the house kitchen, front of the house kitchen, front of the house kitchen. Always, always, always. Mm-hmm. Um, and the ads perform. Well, are you talking really about the first two? Well. Let me ask you, Shane. So. Yeah. So, you know, Facebook has a thing where it says, let us decide which picture. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which one always winds up in front? Um, well, it depends. I, okay. I've seen the kitchens wind up in the front. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also see in the front of the houses. And I, 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 and I can understand why. I think it depends on the types of pictures you're using. I, absolutely. It's certainly going to depend on that. Yeah, like we've, you know, I've done, like, I, I know one area, for instance, where we're like, basically the pictures are million dollar homes. They're gorgeous, right? The, totally the, different, right? Yeah. You can't compare a million five or a million dollar home to exactly. a $350,000 home, right? It's yeah. not, they just can't, they don't compare. 
Yeah. But one thing I did always make sure is that whatever pictures I was putting up, the kitchens were just, you know, beautiful, outstanding, fully renovated kitchens. Yep. You know? Nobody well, wants to move into a house. They have to redo a kitchen. We, yeah, we got a question for Anthony from so, Alex Camilio or Camilio. Yeah. Uh, want to let them in on our years of testing behind this. So I've worked, I've worked with Alex for a long time. I okay. actually, I met Alex uh, at a conference years ago. I, I think it was a women's council of realtors conference. We were both speaking mm -hmm. and uh, we, we have tested literally when I, when I tell you just, years worth of <laughs> and, and sometimes we just did it because we were like you know i wonder what would happen if we did this or i wonder what would happen if we did that um and you know like i said listen it's going to be different in markets right so you know the markets we've been lucky enough to test in and, our, and the clients who have let us kind of run freely with their freely with their money to get results you know I, I appreciate them because they've given me actual data to use across my business yeah. um but yeah i mean i would probably say eight out of ten times the kitchen photos are going to perform better than any other photo out there. And, and again, we all realized why. Um, so yeah, I think that's what Alex was saying was just, we've, we've had a lot of, a lot of time and experience just kind of working kind of in the industry from, I guess, a more of a top level versus just being a real estate agent in the industry, more right. top level and, and being able to work with clients and, and other people out there. And again, you know, them allowing us to basically play with their money. Yeah. Saying, <laughs> You know, yeah, like, that makes, it, makes you it easier, right? dollars worth of leads and or thousand dollars worth of ads and tell me what the results are. And so we could focus on that, right? So, and again, I think that, that attributes to the type of clients that we get, right? So we're yeah. not, you know, we're not the, the, the $500,000 a month marketer, right? We're on a different level of marketing and we get a different level of client who cares about the results. And they're like, we're willing to spend money to get the right results. Right. I like that. I like that. Hey, and we so got... Well, okay. Well, I had a couple questions as well. Do we want? <laughs> I was just going to say we have an announcement coming up in just a few minutes. If you want us to 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 do the announcement, you got to tell us. Like, uh, let, let us know what's up. On. Yeah. Comment. Let us know. It. Thanks for ruining it. Um, <laughs> hey, this whole, so Anthony, one of the big um, one big question that we keep coming that, that we keep seeing coming up. There's two of them actually that I want to ask. Um, and you know, since you have the expertise and you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, so a lot of times the pictures um people are struggling with where am i supposed to get pictures from like what you know fine i i want to put it let, let's test this out let's try these nice kitchens out but my clients has no listings all the houses they have got crappy looking kitchens i can't use these pictures and i don't want to yeah. so you know and I, i'm sure this is you know something maybe you've come across we come we've come across it as well um, how do you get around that? So I think there's there's probably two answers to that question. Like one, if every house that that agent has as crappy kitchens, most likely every house in that area has a crappy kitchen. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it, right? So like maybe that's a time where you use just the front of the house picture or even if that's terrible, like maybe you just go with it. Um, if it's an expectation for the area, then... Don't overthink it, right? Like you're still, listen, when you post a property ad up, like we all know you're still going to get leads, right? You might not get as many leads, but you're still going to get those leads. Um, you know, I guess the, the real go-to answer for most people is probably like, oh, go find stock photos that, you know, that that look good, right? But that's not a, that's <laughs> not a, he uses realtor.com. <laughs> so don't do that. You can get really sued for that. Uh, <laughs> no, just, just so everybody knows when I say you can get really sued for that. So just so you know, agents don't even. We own. just hit fifty viewers. We've never like this is our biggest viewer count yet. You Bam. guys, I like it. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Thank you, guys. Uh, one, one just left. <laughs> the, uh, as soon as you said that, now. <laughs> All right, continue, continue. Um, so, uh, you know, don't. Oh, so on the realtor.com thing, I was saying. So those those pictures are not even owned by the agents. They're actually owned by the person who took the photograph, and they're licensed to the agent. So photographers get really pissy about other people using their photos. Um, so just be careful when you are uh, taking photos from realtor.com. Not to say it's going to happen, but uh, don't don't be crazy well, surprised. You, you and I talked about this a little bit, actually. And I think you actually mentioned that photographers in groups, like on Facebook groups, basically, like they notice and then they share yep. like pictures of homes that have been taken that people are using online and then they report them, right? 
Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens. It's crazy. Not to say it happens like every time you're ever going to get caught, right? But if you do, the last thing you want to deal with is a photographer suing you for his work. Like, it's just, it's a mess. So don't yeah. take pictures from Realtor or from Zillow or from the MLS. Like, unless unless the agent gives them to you and licenses them to you, like, don't just start taking so, shit off. So here, here, yeah. So here's something that I, <laughs> I had a big client. We had a big client in Orlando. And uh, I just went on one of the buy and sell groups and I hired a, like a student photographer just yeah. to go around. Uh, it was right. three communities that we were doing. And he basically just went around with his phone. Yeah. <laughs> just took pictures. I like five, 10 bucks a photo. Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> 25 bucks. I like, I think we got like 15 different pictures, like really nice ones too. And that's what we use for yeah. all their advertising. Um, and, and, you know, for anybody that's struggling to get pictures, I think that's a really, really good solution. Find a student in a specific city and just have them go out and take some pictures of the neighborhoods. Um, and then, you know, make sure you have the agreements with them so that you can own the pictures. And, uh, you know, when you're done with the client, just store them and use them again with another client in that same region. You know, so downstairs. really cool part to kind of add to that chain is uh, there's a company out there, it's called Box Brownie. Um, oh yes, I've heard of it. Yeah, Box yeah. Brownie is like the coolest company ever. I've been using them for, for years. Matt, do you know Box Brownie? I don't. All right, so you take photos with your phone, your camera, or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Then send the photos to this company, and they will take like a regular day, like a cloudy day or whatever right. it is. Right? Yeah, they'll, they'll put like super nice backgrounds. They'll put like super a nice green. background. They light up the windows. My favorite ones are they're called Dusk to Dawn. They're like four bucks a photo. These <laughs> photos look ridiculous ridiculous and it looks like you hired this crazy professional photographer so like to do like five photos will cost you like 10 20 bucks and no joke like if you don't have good pictures to use send the photos to them let them do their thing they will come out looking like professional photos even if they were taken from an iphone uh it is it is very very cool so like in your example you paid the kid 25 bucks maybe you spent another 30 bucks on you know box brownie you would have had these like crazy yeah. beautiful professional photos it would have been really cool yeah no it's uh right. that's cool man yeah 950 I'll, uh, I'll have to try that out for sure so I, so one more thing i want to address yeah. here um and it's not picture related anymore so we can move away from that perfect and then uh, after <laughs> yeah, perfect <laughs> after 10 o'clock i want to start talking about um seller leads okay it's a huge huge topic i yeah. think um, and a lot of people, uh, I see this question come up all the time in the group about, you know, how do I generate seller leads? What's working, what's not working, things like that. So this is the perfect opportunity since we have you yeah. here. Um, you know, we want to talk about this, but one of the things that I want to address is, um, the discrimination, um, issues, uh, especially in the U S and yeah, we mentioned have to deal with that shit in Canada. No, we don't. Like, we ridiculous. advertise to any, you know, what? the crazy <laughs> thing is, so I've, we've got a chat bot running right now with another ad. And we're getting, like, <laughs> anyway, I don't want to get, get into it, but I'll tell you offline what okay. we decided to do about it. But it's crazy because we don't have discrimination laws here, right? We can, you know, advertise to whoever we want. Um, we can, you know, just not show the ads to people or, you know, they even exclude them, you know, out of our ads. So it's crazy. But in the U.S., this is totally different. You can get a lot of trouble for this. Um, in fact, now Facebook is shutting down your ads if you start discriminating and that's well, ad accounts, your ad, the, whole, the account. whole ad account. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for people that are starting out in this, you want to be careful when you're, when you're doing your ads, but what, what's really cool, Anthony, and this is something that you and I actually discussed um, like probably a couple of years ago, because mm -hmm. uh, it was something that you brought up in another group um, saying, no, Shane, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I yell at people constantly in that group for doing it. Um, I think we're both still in that group. Yeah. Um, I like literally it's the, it, like, it frustrates me because I'm like, if you just search for this question, you will see me yelling at someone else for it. Like if you just wanted me to yell at you too, like, I'm glad to do it. Um, but yeah, I know exactly what story you're telling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but what was what what came out of that um, that discussion was uh, a hack that you had, which I've implemented it um, over and over and over again with all my U.S. clients. Um, it's never been an issue. I've never had an ad account shut down or even an ad shut down. Um, so let's talk about the discrimination thing and what you can and what we can't do. So, so a, lot, a lot of people are teaching married with kids and oh, even age stuff and, and this is the shit you can't do right no, so no I'm, I'm gonna pull up the exact five or six things I matt actually just got re like didn't you just take your course on this whole discrimination thing as well yeah yeah i just had to take a refresher for real life <laughs> good times 
I so, hate those. I take like 22 and a half hours every, uh, every uh, what, two years, I think it is. Yeah, so I had to have all my refresher stuff. So really quickly for everybody that's watching here, you know, just a little bit of background about this. Um, a lot of people, when they're building out their ad sets, what we're doing is we're essentially, we're, we're, we're adjusting the age range, first of all, because we're trying to get into that, you know, audience where they're most likely to be buying homes. And that would make sense, right? Because the majority of the audience is probably somewhere between the 28 to, you know, maybe 45 or so, just based on, you know, NAR statistics, right? Of who's buying homes, who's selling homes, right? So that would make sense. The other statistic is that, what is that? Hashtag, it's upside down. <laughs> no, it's either backwards, backwards or upside down. It's uh, backwards. Dang it! It's I thought it was. I thought it was going to show out. it backwards, so I wrote it backwards. Like <laughs> I legit wrote that backwards. So for you, I think it's going to show it backwards on your screen, but for everyone else, oh, for everyone else, it's okay. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, I have no idea what it says. I have no idea what it says. Yeah, saying. I was like, I was like, what? Is that? So we have this age thing that we we're adjusting, right? And then the other statistic is that the majority of people that are buying and selling homes are people that are married with kids, um, which would also make sense, right? So you would want to adjust your targeting for that kind of stuff. And then there's all you know there are other things that we can do, you know, uh, targeting old people and whatever else you do, right? So, um, but this is not a good thing to do. You don't want to be doing this stuff. Because you get a lot of trouble. Do it, it's, right? it's a ten thousand dollar fine every time you do it. Um, it's it's wild. It's wild. So what's the news? The news yeah, <laughs> guys. Hashtag what's the news? If you want to hear about this, you want to know. Yeah. Hashtag what's the news? All right. So, so let, we, got, we got two minutes. We got two minutes still. So, so, so. let's talk about the discrimination thing. Just wrap this up. And yes. So there's there's uh, seven protected classes: race, color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, and disability. Okay. So when people talk about, you know, only advertising to people who are married or recently engaged or, you know, recently divorced or whatever it is, right? That's totally illegal, totally illegal. You cannot do it. Um, but there's workarounds for things, right? And, and even age is, it, you're not allowed to discriminate against age either. Um, and it's covered in one of those protected classes. I'm just not sure which one. The only time you're allowed to discriminate against age is if you're advertising for a 55 and older community. It's the only allowed discrimination for age because that's specifically for seniors. Um, so, but other than that, so targeting neighborhoods could actually be a problem as well, right? So like if you were like to say, we well, you know what, I don't want to advertise to this neighborhood because it's, yeah, these people yeah. can't afford a house. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, it's, it becomes a very, so that's going to be less frowned upon than other things. Um, Cause at least you can say, well, you know, we know that these people, uh, nah, I mean, there's really no good explanation for why you would do that, but right. yeah, you could get, it's a gray area. I'll put it that way. You could so advertise. Fun. So for marketers that are, are, are targeting married with kids or married or divorced or whatever you're doing, don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. And here, and, and here's the hack, right? tell, there's a hack. Yeah, you could tell them the hack. I know we discussed this and, and I know we all probably use this in the business now. Yeah, let's talk about it because this is, this is if, if, you, if you want to target, then this is what you, you need to do, right? So go ahead, Tom, because it's yours. <laughs> okay, so, so I remember this was back in like 2017 and, and I'm yelling at Shane in a group. I'm like, you can't fucking do that. Stop it. He's like, what do you mean I can't? I'm like, you can't do that. Um, <laughs> and so he's like, he's like, well, what do you mean? He's like, nobody 18 years old can buy a house. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, but I get it. Like, so in our ad sets, we very well in some cases might spend a majority of money, let's say in the 30 to 45 or 50 range for those are the people that are really transacting in the market, right? Um, while we can't just spend all our money there, we still have to protect ourselves, right? So what you do is you create your ad sets and add, this is actually going to change, interestingly, the way we have to do this. We're actually going to have to create new campaigns for this now because everything's going to be budget optimized, but that's a whole nother conversation. Right. Um, so what you will have to do is, you know, most of our money, let's say, you know, $20 a day is going to go towards advertising to our main age range, the 30 to 50, right? But then what you have to do is you have to create additional ad sets that advertise to all of the age ranges. So you, you cover the 18 to 65 plus, but you don't have to spend as much money, right? You could spend a dollar a day combined on those ad sets. Right. And what that does is it covers you. You're saying, listen, I'm advertising to them. I'm spending my dollar a day, but I'm spending most of my money 
in this Adrian. And, and the comparison for that would be like, if you want to sell a luxury home, you should probably advertise, you know, and I'm going back to the print world, right? You should probably advertise in the newspaper, but you also might want to advertise in the Rob report if the house is $2 million, right? right. Like you should do it all, but you know where your major dollars should be spent. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and, and then other things you don't want to do inside of your copy is basically calling out, you know, Hey, married people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, don't do that. Like that right? yeah. You don't want to do that kind oh, of man. stuff. Either. So basically so I don't that, even know if, would Facebook flag you for that? I mean, I, I haven't uh, read that. Well, like yeah, I've, never, I've never, I've never done that, but uh, you know, it's something you don't want to do. So, so the hack is, so basically you cannot, target married there is news kids. people are starting to ask there is there is news there is news we promise yeah, there's news. coming up <laughs> yeah, okay. in just a second I'll we're stop. getting through I'll this stop. hack sorry yeah. Gene, didn't mean to interrupt that's okay so the idea is blast. basically you create two audiences one of them which you you target a little bit with the age ranges and then the other one you basically just leave it open and then right. you spend a buck a day on or whatever two bucks a day or whatever right and right. and the reality is when like every time I do this, I actually get leads on the other one for like 10 cents <laughs> because it, it actually tries to get me. A so, lead. well, and the, the crazy part is like, and I always say this, right? So we stopped even doing that. We just, we leave the Adrian just totally open now. Like Facebook knows who's going to interact with your ad. Like you don't have to, Facebook loves big numbers now. They don't want really detailed targeted things, right? They want hundred thousand, 200,000 plus audiences. So like people try to get too cutesy in their targeting today. Like yeah. stop it. Like, <laughs> stop getting so cute. Like just kind of leave it open. Anthony, Anthony, we want the people that are interested in mortgages and the people <laughs> yeah. that are interested in Home Depot. And then if they're not interested in that, we want them interested in Lowe's and then Ace Hardware. And then we want people that have also looked at new iPhones in the past year. So we know we get the price point right. Oh and those 900 people, those are our target audience. <laughs> like I laugh, like my ad sets now, like after I've had a client for about six months, mm-hmm. our ad sets, when we put them out, the only interest that we have, we do a radius around a certain area. The only interest is real estate. No, no, no Nothing Zillow's, else, the yeah. realtor. No, like just interested in real estate. Real estate yeah. And Facebook knows who to put it in front of. Like, <laughs> don't have to go crazy well yeah you know and I, I've been ninja hacks you guys he just gave his targeting out there you go i you know for, <laughs> I've, been, I've been saying it for months now like if you don't think that facebook doesn't know who's in market you guys are crazy they know exactly they know who's in market who's looking for homes who's interested in the house and the copy makes a difference because they can read that and put it in front of the right people. So, right. Like, like they used to say, right, it's all about the offer. Yeah. Right? They can put it in front of a million people, but it's all about the offer. The people who are going to respond or want to respond will. Like we, funny enough, we started running a lot of reach ads, right? Like oh, not yeah. even traffic. Yeah. Really? We, we were going to reach because, so I, I, had a, I had an ad set last month that we were getting in front. Our audience was 800,000 and our CPM was 22 cents. And we were running at $50 a day we were getting in front of like 60,000 people a day. That's awesome. Yeah. And it was like, it was nonsense. I was wow. like, is this for real? Cause like normally you're around 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks you get in front of a couple thousand people. You're really happy. And all of a sudden we were getting like 40 leads, you know, 30 leads. It was, it's nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. And, and you know, like we said, Facebook knows who to put it in front of. It's just yeah. Nuts. Yeah. For sure. It's awesome. Okay. Well, listen, it's uh 10 Oh four. We missed our deadline. We so... have one question, Shane. One okay. question I want to get to. Let's do it. So who are the equal housing police that would be checking for this on Facebook? Anthony's going to believe it's called fair housing. I'm telling you fair housing. Um, So Facebook has an algorithm that actually will shut your ads down. They're not going to report you. Um, But if Facebook sees it through their algorithm, um, they will shut your ad down and eventually shut your ad account down. Now, if you have a great ad score, um, and, and just so you know, and, and people who don't, every ad account has a score that's associated with it. Um, if you haven't gotten a lot of ads shut down and this and that, like probably nothing to worry about. But if you're a new ad account or you've recently started seeing your ads getting flagged and shut down, be scared because your ad account's going to get shut down. I promise. Um, and it's happening. I mean, I'm in a lot of these high level marketing groups and whatnot, and you see it all the time. I mean, I've seen it, like really high level marketers, guys doing, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a month, get their ad account shut down. It's mm-hmm. They don't, they're not discriminating against who you are and how much money you're spending. Yeah. You're breaking the law. And they're not going to let you advertise. <clears throat> yeah. And if you're, if you're thinking like they're not keeping track of this as well, so that if NAR yes. someday yes. says, Hey, we'll give you an IDX feed. If you tell us who the people who discriminate are. Yep. 
I, I watch myself because like that sort of stuff happens in this industry. Yeah. Like, I mean, there was a guy, was it New York? Like two years ago, there was a guy that got hit title uh, for like, it was a RESPA violation, but it was, it was BS RESPA violation. He got hit for like $280,000 or something like that. The guy who, you know, can't afford it. Oh, I don't know if it was New York, but that's a New York and New Jersey. That's a mess. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, that's the thing. And as I'm, as a marketer, you're, you're, you're partially responsible here, right? Yeah. I mean, it's... if I was the realtor that, and I hired me as the marketer and I ran those ads, I would turn around and sue me. Right. Like, yeah. exactly. like you, you should have known. Right. But not really. Like I, I turn around and I say, well, no, you should have known, but yeah. we're, we, you're right. We are responsible. A hundred percent. Yep. Cool. Well, um, so 1006, we missed the deadline for announcing whatever we're going to announce. So we're just not going to bother. <laughs> so what do you, guys say? you guys want it? You guys want us to announce this? You want us to let, us, let you know what's going on? Let you know. Yes, All Plus, I'm tired. It's been a long day. Forget it. <laughs> say, just tell us. Say, just tell us. All right. So let's talk about this, guys. Okay. We're super, super excited here. Um, guys who have been in the group here for a while. Um, and, and those of you who've taken some of our past master classes, um, you guys know we get a ton of value out of this. So typically we bring an expert in, we do a master class, um, and we're going to talk about this uh, new master class that we're putting together. And this is one that's been um, asked for inside the group by a lot of people. We did a, a poll um, not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, over 70%. We asked if they want to do this type of master class or if they want to do mortgages, um, over 70% basically said they want to do this other type of masterclass. So we feel that Anthony is the perfect person to do this. And we're going to talk about this um, uh, shortly here. But uh, so basically we are opening up and announcing the Motivated Seller Masterclass. It is now open for registration. There should be posts inside the group that went up at 10 o'clock. I actually already see the comments coming up. Um, so this is opened up for um, registration right now. You can go ahead and uh, sign up guys don't wait too long for this because the prices do go up um they go up every week so march 15th is when we're going to do the motivated sellers masterclass. so let's talk a little bit about what that is um what um matt why don't, basically why don't you pull up the um the, the the landing page here and we can talk a little bit about what uh what we're going to include in this um, can you send me a link? <laughs> yeah, I'll send, you a link. <laughs> <I don't have laughs> I'll send you a link for sure. But um, let's talk a little bit about what a motivated <laughs> seller is and uh, and why we want to do this um, and why people are, are so anxious about, you know, getting these types of leads for people. So I'll, I'll let you handle that there, uh, Anthony. Yeah. So, you know, motivated sellers are kind of fall into two categories, right? Um, somebody who either just lost their job or is now moving to another job and they need to get out of their house right now, right? Maybe they have three to six months worth of mortgage payments saved up, um, but they lost their job and they need, they need to go. There's no other option for them. They're not behind their mortgage or anything like that, but they quickly realize that if they don't get a job in the next 30 to 60 days, that they're going to have to be out. Um, any smart person who owns a house knows that they don't have a long runway is they might not actually wind up selling, but they're going to start that process really, really quickly. And the agent is going to know very quickly, okay, if they get another job in you know a month or two months, then fine, this isn't going to work. But if they don't, we better put this house on the market and we have to get this thing sold. Uh, or if they're getting transferred to another location, right? Now they bought a house five years ago and their employer says, you know what? We love you so much. We're glad you're here, but we're sending you to Chicago. So you have two months to leave. Um, that's a really motivated seller. Uh, someone who has to get out, most likely they're going to want to buy a place there if they already own a place here. So again, very motivated seller. The other side of motivated sellers is foreclosures and short sales, right? People who have already been served their paperwork, who uh, you know need to, they, they have one, they really have one option, right? Sell to an investor today. Okay. Um, so I think that the class will entail uh, a couple things. I think it will entail if you are an agent or you're working with an agent, how to get those leads and to make sure your agent is positioned with investors. And then also for you as a marketer or an agent to approach those leads and have investors in place uh, to purchase those properties immediately. Uh, just for reference, an investor will pay a thousand to two thousand dollars per lead for that lead if they're That's that insane. motivated. <laughs> yes, yeah, but it's insane. Oh. 
the coolest part about that is you generate those leads at right around 30 bucks. Um, so there's a giant profit margin. Ooh, that's on awesome. It. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 30 bucks so is really good. Yeah. Like, we're generating leads in, uh, in Santa Maria, California right now for one of our clients. Uh, and he's hovering right around $29 uh, per lead. And that's in the heart of California where, you know, we, he doesn't get a ton of leads. I think his budget's maybe a thousand a month. Uh, but it's more than enough to keep him and his team working all the time. Uh, these are very high intent leads uh, and they, they need to get out. Right. So uh, pretty much, I think he's contacted about 40 or 50% of the leads that we've been able to generate uh, and have physical conversations. What's their, what's going on? What's their status? How quickly they need to get out? Can I come see the house? You know, kind of thing. So awesome. um, he's, he's doing really, really well with them. Uh, he's very happy with them. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to teach you how to find them and we're going to teach you how to run ads against them. And we're going to, we're going to basically hand deliver everything you need to do this. Uh, not only in the masterclass, but uh, I know there's some, some cool stuff we're going to, we're going to give you on top of that. Um, I think one of the things that, uh, that at least I'm going to offer as a bonus, I don't know what Shane and Matt are offering. I haven't even discussed this with them. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to we'll, offer. We're relying on you for all the bonuses. Oh, you're relying on me for the bonuses. Wait, right. is there a way to pause the stream okay. and talk about this real so, quick? Uh, so I know, so midnight tonight, the price goes up, right? Or, or something happens tonight at midnight. What is it? Well, okay. So guys, if you want the motivated seller masterclass, um, typically the last time we did this, we gave away some bonuses. Okay. So we want people to get signed up right away. Um, so if you guys go ahead, sign up before the end of the night, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my guides that I typically sell. Matt, what else do we want to throw in that? If they sign up tonight. You know what? I'll throw in my ROI calculator, which is another great. Bam, I like that. I like the ROI yeah, calculator. ROI calculator. That's fantastic. Yeah. So guys, if you sign up to the motivated seller masterclass before midnight tonight, it's got to be before midnight tonight. Not like the last time where you guys were messaging me in the morning, telling me you got <laughs> too drunk on the show. You forgot about it. And, you, and it's got to be tonight. Yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. yeah that's so, just, that takes so much time. Yeah. Geez. It takes now, forever now, to do that. Second. We want people to sign up tonight. Okay. Um, and so those are the two bonuses that we will, that, that Matt and I will add into this. I don't know if maybe Anthony wants to throw in another bonus. I do. I want to throw in one bonus. That's, That's awesome. what I want to do. Good stuff. I want to throw one extra bonus. Okay. So I know that I gave you guys an ad already today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in my top performing motivated seller ad. And to go with that ad, I'm also going to throw in a two page report that is basically going to give their options as a motivated seller on the things that they can or can't do at this point. Um, this is geared just so you know, towards a short sell seller. This report is geared towards a short sell. So not someone who lost their job or, uh, you know, is relocating. This is geared towards the short sell uh, part of it or somebody who needs to get out of their house right now. Um, so I'm going to throw that in uh, my top performing ad and one report um, as well, as long as you sign up by midnight tonight, That's I gotta awesome. think about it. I gotta think about what I can, <laughs> what I can throw in. You guys are throwing in so much value. I'm like, crap. Hang on, let me go back. Well, Matt, 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 you and I are kind of together. Just right? so, to put that in perspective. <laughs> I usually sell that along with other ads for about 300 bucks. So that's, it's a massive, massive piece of value. I just threw in there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Gene, so did you just say we're doing this together. Like, 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 Hey, you didn't bring a, a Christmas gift for this year. It's okay. We put a <laughs> the on it, Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> so Matt, why don't you tell everybody what's included in the master class? Cause I know you have the links now to the registration page. So, why don't you run, okay. that, run down that uh, value stack for us and, and tell us what uh, Anthony is going to be covering there to on, on that masterclass. Before we even go to what's included, like, can we just talk about what this is? Because anybody who's sitting there going, what's a motivated seller? They're just thinking we it's just like did. a seller campaign, right? Oh, like, that's half a bottle of, of Fireball Deep. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not there. But I'm just saying, like, we I don't just think people understand this. We just went through this. I know, I know, I know. But I don't think Here's they get one. it. Like, what this is. <laughs> Not only is this amazing for your agents, but like you can work with investors with this stuff and investors, they make way more than an agent does on a transaction, which means you can charge way more. So you could charge per lead on an investor, right? Like, like I said, an investor will pay a, a massive amount of money. Like one of our investors over the past 45 days has done three wholesale deals and is doing one rehab on a $2,000 ad spend. 
the wholesale deal is averaged out at ten thousand dollars a deal. So he's made he'll, he's already made thirty grand, and after the rehab, we'll probably make another sixty to seventy grand. So inside of forty five days, our investors has made a hundred thousand dollars, give or take. Um, so just to kind of put that in perspective, how crazy it is to generate a motivated seller. Matt, Matt's like Matt's trying to drive home the fact that these people will pay a fortune for leads. <laughs> Yeah. Not only that, but if you're an agent and you know how to do this for yourself, like you're golden because listings are where it's at. I mean, everybody knows that. Right. And these are not like home eval leads where they're quite a ways out. Right. These are like, come to my house and tell me what you can give me cash for right. like for my house. And you know what, if you're an agent, you can get, uh, you can get investors to work with you to do that. You can also learn how to wholesale a deal and make crazy money yourself. I mean, go for that. Or what you do is you go in there and you give them the price because again, the biggest thing is getting the appointment with these people. And this is getting you in contact with them. Um, we had a client, I mean, they were happy. They had like only a few leads uh, one month, but they got two listing appointments. They bought a house and I, yeah, I'm I not sure said, they bought the second one. We sent them two leads in a month. <laughs> We sent them five. We sent them five. Oh, five was they, five, right? But the, well, they bought one house and they had. Uh, but, but they made a ton of money. They made all their money back yeah. plus more. They didn't care. Yeah. They like 10x their money. Like it was ridiculous. But anyways, like the point being, if you're an agent, you can go in there and what you do is you give them the wholesale offer, but then you say, or if you're interested in getting full retail value and can stand to wait, you know, 20 to 30 days. We can put it on the market at XYZ price. Right. Anthony, I'm sure you've done this, right? So I, per, I personally don't, uh, okay. but the team does. So we, we generate the leads. Uh, I, I will buy a property. I will rehab it. I will resell it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't take those appointments anymore, thankfully. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, our team definitely does that, right? So they go in, they try and negotiate for us if the person's not comfortable with the number. It's like, hey, listen, no problem. We'll just put it on the market for you. We'll get it sold for full price. We're getting something anyway, right? Like it doesn't doesn't matter. And what is what is the statistic? I don't have it offhand, but it's like sixty percent of the people that uh, sell a home work with the first agent they talk to. Yeah, and you're and getting in the door because, right there. Yeah, and that's strictly because only one out of five agents actually gets in touch with them. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like a nonsense number. <laughs> but still, but still, <laughs> like, like think about this. Zillow puts four people on their site right and if you ask those people only 60 percent of them have been contacted that's four agents at once at yeah. once that have paid two hundred dollars for that lead and six out of ten times they get contacted not a hundred percent of the time oh man not only that but you need to you literally need to know this stuff if you're in this business because this is where it's moving and anthony you can probably speak to this a little bit you know what Zillow's doing. You know what the other big like open door, what they're doing. They're moving to this model. Uh, Zillow's so, buying houses. Uh, dude, so I, I love the iBuyer model. I always have. Um, iBuyer, is that what you said? Yeah, iBuyer. That, that's, yeah. The, that's the model, right? The yeah. iBuyer model. Um, and I'm again, I'm like in a ton of these groups, not only in real estate and marketing and this and that. And I love seeing the two sides of it because real estate agents right now are freaking out. Freaking yeah. out about the iBuyer model. But, and, and I think the biggest concern that they have is that Zillow is taking their job away, right? That's, and I'm sure you've heard that in deal and, and talking to people and being in the industry. Yeah. Um, but what I don't think most people realize is Zillow doesn't want to, be, I don't care what anybody says or anybody, the best argument you've heard about it, Zillow doesn't want to be in the brokerage business. They hire agents. So when they get a lead that says, hey, come by my house, they call the agent they're working with in the area and they say, hey, do me a favor, go to the house, give us a CMA, let us know what the repairs are, all the stuff, right? And then they Zillow buys the house and then Zillow calls that same agent back and says, hey, do me a favor, list the house on the open market. Zillow's model is to make approximately two to $3,000 per house. They're not trying to make a fortune. They're not trying to kill people, this and that. So I don't know if you know who, do you know who Rob Hahn is, Matt? Rob Hahn? Yeah, so he writes a, a fantastic blog. He wrote an article about this the other day, and I actually read an article, uh, and I don't know if Alex or Chris uh, can find it. I think actually Alex might have just, or Alex will put it in. Um, so I, it was the craziest thing. 
uh, Zillow so, on the sorry, earnings call. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Some, somebody already bought the masterclass. We haven't even released the, lead, the, the link yet. <laughs> I just put it down. Is that even possible? Or you I just put, put it, down. it down. Or you did, you did. <laughs> People are begging for the link. So the link is there. But like... <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, that's okay. So that. it was the craziest statistic. So, uh, you know, agents, agents deal is, you know, if you deal with us as an agent, we'll get you more money for your house, right? So he did a, like a study on it and, and the way where he found it was after Zillow's earning call, earnings call in January, they, they released like an addendum to it or, or uh, uh, I forgot the word is like a, like an add on to it. Right. Okay. And the add on actually showed that the seller of that home netted more money selling to Zillow than they did to an agent, which is crazy when you really break it down, because that means that not only is it easier to sell to Zillow, it actually costs less. Yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. Like, again, this is the direction that the industry is moving in. Is, is, it is. is a better experience for the client. All about experience, right? Why do, I, why do I shop on Amazon every day? Because it's easy. And because when you buy something, they say, you might also want this. And you're like, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, that's cool. Yep, that's cool. <laughs> um, but I think I think the agent, uh, you know, the agents are a little too concerned about it. I, I think that Zillow actually really wants to keep working with agents. You know, they're not going to alienate eighty percent of their business right now. It's all from agents. Um, I don't think they want to be a broker, and I think that there's, uh, I think people are scared, but I, I don't think they have any reason to be scared. Uh, I think this is this is all going to work out for the better for the consumer. And if you can change the consumer experience and the consumer behavior you have a great business and, and Zillow is truly, truly doing it. But you got to say though, that Zillow at some point, if they wanted to just take higher agents, go they to won't. salary, they could. Yeah, but I'll tell you why they won't. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the one reason why. Liability. Okay. Okay. The other reason why, I'll give you two reasons. Here we go, two reasons, right? Part <laughs> of their selling is that they also want to control mortgage and title. If they right. also control the real estate aspect of it, they physically can't control mortgage and title. So it would be a federal offense. So they already- How's Keller, well, well, that's a whole nother thing, how Keller Williams is doing that. So, Keller, so, but, anyway. but Keller, yeah, I mean, Keller doesn't really own the mortgage company, right? It's a partner company. So Zillow already has the mortgage company. They, they And yeah, there's more they money do. on the mortgage side. Like there, there's the, for, for think about what they're doing, right? Zillow is saying, okay, cool, cool. You want to sell me your house? Great. Also just fill in this couple of fields here. We're going to send you a DocuSign and you'll have a mortgage. Yeah. Like no, it's an automated process. It's Why so simple. For an agent, right? That now has to go out. They have to spend, even if they're salary, right? Has to go out. They're going to have to pay for the car. They're going to pay for the gas. Think of all the liability that goes with that. Yeah. They want no part of that. They're like, you know what? There's already people that want to go do this. Let's See, I think them to do it. I think you're right. The concern is a little bit too, too robots are taking over compared to what it right. really is. But right. at the at the same time, I do think they're moving towards a model where it's like Uber's the business; they just need drivers, right? right. Zillow's going to be the business; they just right. need agents. They just need agents, exactly yeah. right. But yeah. like they'll be able to control like maybe what they make. And this this class right here teaching people what Zillow's moving to before Zillow gets there. This is a huge opportunity. Like you, I don't think you understand if you're an agent, you're probably freaked out. Yeah. Zillow's five years out from yeah. doing this. Right. So we have a five year window to capture all of this. Exactly. After those five years, there's going to be no other option, but to go to a Zillow or an open door or any of those other type of companies. That's, that's where you're going to have to go. And here's the thing, selling this is going to be so simple because, because not only are agents freaked out like they should be, right? But agents are freaked out. So if you bring this to them and you're like, hey, this is a solution to a problem that is happening to you regardless of whether or not you like it. Right. And I'm going to make you a crazy deal that's going to be way better than you're going to get from Zillow. It's a no brainer. Yep. Not only the fact that that, but... Zillow, you can only get this in, uh, what is it, Florida, uh, Texas, and Arizona or something like that? Honestly, I'm not even sure. I, I know they started in Arizona. I'm not sure all the states they're in right now. Um, I've just been kind of reading the, the data on it. I'm not, I'm not quite sure um, how it's all going. But, yeah, I mean, they're, they're years out. I mean, they've said, I think they said that they're hoping to have this by 2025 or 2022. Like, we're years out, right? But, yeah. like, 
being able to find those sellers right now, like th- there's an opportunity here that we're not going to have in five years, yeah. right? So, and there, and it's a massive opportunity, right? Yeah, and there's, there's, there's a way to find these people right now. Exactly. So, and, and you know what? I'll run into it now. What is included, you guys? Because now that hopefully, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like Matt's <laughs> switching gears now. <laughs> like, I, I just want people to understand like how big this is because this is massive. I just want to thank Alex. Alex, pop the, uh, the link in the chat for uh, the, Rob's article in there. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And let's get here. So, again, everything you need to know to work with investors and agents looking for motivated sellers. Motivated sellers, by the way, are also the same thing as like the we buy houses stuff, but we're kind of kicking it up a notch. So secrets to generating motivated seller leads in any market, how to work with investors, agents, and set the right expectations so that you can retain your clients. It's kind of important. Um, The exact ad copy and strategies you need to use to get the best results. Okay. Like that is huge. I mean, think about everybody who bought the October masterclass. Or October 3rd masterclass, like you plugged in the ad, you plugged in the copy, you got crazy results. We're giving you the exact ad copy and strategies that you need to get the best results from motivated sellers. Like it's a no brainer. Uh, the exact targeting that works for motivated seller campaigns, because Anthony, you do need to use a little bit of targeting with this one. Is that right? Depending on your pixel. Yes. We're going to go through both in the masterclass. We're going to say if it's a brand new pixel or if you've done it, um, you know, if you, if you have some data on it or you're an investor who has been running ads on it. Um, again, it. Facebook is you know big data company. They, they know what you're looking for. Yep. The exact done for you funnels that you can start using today. Shane, you want to speak on that a little bit? Uh, done for no, you because funnels? So Anthony. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, so you know, basically with this too, it, it's about ease of use, right? So uh, I, I'll teach you very, very uh, easily about the actual funnel part of it but I'm actually going to teach this class using lead ads. So you don't even have to go crazy. You don't have to make a huge funnel or anything like that. And that lead ad is going to get a downloadable report that the person actually wants to read. And again, that, that report, and, and again, I'm giving away one as a bonus, but another report is going to be literally all about them calling the agent because it's their only option. That's, that's the only option that they physically have right now is to call that agent and at least find out what it's worth. Okay. And people are asking, is it closed now? It's not closed now. I posted the comment with the actual link. Uh, it is pinned comment. You should be able to see, I'll drop it one more time, but um, yeah, it's there. So Anthony, people are asking, do they need click funnels to run this? No, no, no. You don't, you don't need anything. You, you awesome. need we, we will teach a, like I said, a small piece of it. If you want to use a funnel and I'll give you a couple of funnel options, right? You can use click funnel. You could use, you know, a, a, one of our CRM softwares that we're partnered with wise agent. Uh, you could, you could use any, CR, yeah. any uh, landing funnel, page. Over funnel doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean funnel, like a piece of software here. We're, we're talking about the, the, your ad to your lead capture to your, right. whatever you send them. That's your funnel, right? This is right. what we're talking about here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Click funnel is just a landing page software. People confuse that, but it's nothing yeah. new. <laughs> No, it's it's well marketed. 20 years ago, (laughs) well marketed using funnels. So the other thing I love is the secret targeting hacks that no one talks about. And this is huge because like you just mentioned with the pixels, like, all right, without getting into detail, like the secret targeting hacks that no one's talking about. We'll just say that. It's it's just, I geek out on a little bit. So pricing strategies and tips on how to work in this niche. Anthony, why are the pricing strategies and tips on how to work in this niche so important? So working in this niche is unique, right? So this is an investment or an investor driven niche. Mm -hmm. Certain agents you want to approach for it, certain investors you want to approach for it. So this becomes a new way to market your current, if you're a digital marketer, who to go market to. And if you're a real estate agent, the type of people that you need to have ready to go for when you do, when you generate these leads, right? So two parts to that, and again, depending on which track you're on, um, it's going to be really important to have these people in place because when these people give you their information, they need to act right now. So there's a little legwork you have to do before you even start running an ad, because when you get the lead, you want to make sure you can give it to somebody who can make, take some action on it. Love it. Um, follow-up strategies to get the highest conversions for your client. Okay. This is huge because what is it? Over 70% of all leads are closed on the follow-up. So we have the follow-up strategies for this system, specific to this system that are going to help you convert at a very high level. Um, 
not only that, but then the live masterclass with, with, with all of us, <laughs> it says with experts, I almost read that. <laughs> Anthony Mann, Shane Hillier, and yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. Uh, and no. I just want to, you know, the, the thing is about these live masterclasses, which which is so amazing. And I think honestly, this is where all the value is. You actually yeah. get to sit down with Anthony Mann, which is really cool. Plus, you know, myself, and then of course Matt joins us. And you know, if you want to talk to him and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> of course Matt joins us. I love it. I'm just it. kidding, I, Matt. You know. You know, Sorry. we love like, well, you. Well, you add so much value to this, but you know, I, 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 there's a there's so much value in being there live and being able to ask questions as we go through this. It's huge, right? So, um, so, and of course, then you get the live recordings as well. So you can watch this anytime you want. Plus the three bonuses that uh, we're giving away. So the bonuses that Matt and I are giving away. Um, the the guides, my calculator. If you buy before midnight. And then uh, we're also, uh, Anthony here is going to throw in one of his reports uh, mm -hmm. as well, if you buy before midnight, which is really cool. Um, thanks a lot for that, Anthony. Yeah, absolutely. And um, again, I want to remind people price goes up. Um, well, first of all, you're not going to be able to get the bonuses after midnight. And then price goes up, I, I believe on Monday, price goes up and then continues to go up until we hit the masterclass. Again, this is one of these masterclasses here that will not be available um, after March 15th, after we do the masterclasses, unlike some of our other masterclasses where we sell them over and over again, uh, the arrangements we have here with Anthony is that we don't sell this again. He doesn't want everybody out there to know all the secrets. One time. Um, so this is an exclusive well, Shane, thing. I'm not done with the with the stack. Oh, you're not? Well, what else? <laughs> you Shane's like, in that? Sleep. Like, hold on, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. We'll double your offer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can stay on for more That's than 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> so the live Q&A session, get all your questions answered on the Motivated Seller. I just talked about that. Just, I know you did. You did. But then we also were offering the full recording of the masterclass so you guys can watch it I every time. I said that too. Yes. You really talk on it. Well, it's I just did. plus so much more. What did you have in mind there, Shane? <laughs> <laughs> the bonuses we talked about. Anyways, all right, all right. So we got a time. No. We've already got it. We got a bunch of people that have already bought it. It's awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, but I, I want to mention something because I'm really proud of this. We Guys, whoever, if you're buying this, you got to watch all the videos as you go through the funnel we put together because there's something in one of these that's really, really freaking awesome. I'm really proud of it. We showed Anthony. Anthony was like, holy shit, this is cool. Yep. <laughs> so, guys, we talked this stuff. We're um, in talks about launching that later uh, for oh, Fortnite dude, you, on its own. Oh, yeah. Like, you're not going to be able to buy this for what you can get it through this master no, class. No, it'll so, be probably 497 Yeah, it's going to be a whole course, but we're, we're launching this as a, I guess, kind of a beta thing. Um, so yeah, it's a beta inside a beta. No, it's beta inside a beta. master class. <laughs> so we're, we're super pumped about this, this master class, and we're really excited to work with Anthony. Um, obviously, Anthony, you've got you know, just a crap ton of experience here. It's going to be great to get you on this master class. And I think for people that buy this, they're going to get so much value. Uh, from being on this, plus being able to ask questions and just watch exactly how you work with your clients, what the ads are, what the funnels are, um, exactly what you do to do motivated sellers. Um, and this is, guys, don't come to me in two weeks from now saying, oh, you know what, I missed out. And, you know, like, this is the time to jump in on this. And, and the, the cost here, like, you're, you're going to get so much value. Anybody that's ever bought one of our master classes knows how much value that we make our special guests do <laughs> so it's like, yeah. we, we go through this period where it's like okay what are you what are you doing anthony show us and then if it's not enough then uh it, we go back to the drawing board and we keep adding stuff to it so yeah, pretty much. um yeah <laughs> but okay so anything is not top notch all right i figured it out shane you did i figured out what i'm gonna bring to the party oh boy <laughs> go back to this <laughs> figure out what i'm bringing to the party I'm bringing it way back. all right so Let's see how many sales we get from this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we get a ton. All right, if you buy after I say this, you got to put it in the comments. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're at, we're at 33 right, so viewers right now. We're at 33 viewers. If we drop by 20%, I'm going to be really pissed off here. <laughs> All right, fine. Here's what I'm going to do. For everybody who buys before midnight tonight. Um, we only have 20, 33 viewers. What? We've only got 33 viewers. Right. Half of them have already bought. So whoever buys before midnight tonight, I am currently in the middle of putting together uh, my version 2.0 turnover rate calculator. You can't give that away. Yep. 
I don't know what that Version is. 2.0 turnover <laughs> rate calculator, which is going to show you how to find the turnover rate so that you can figure out where your agent needs to focus all of their efforts. Because if you know that one zip code is selling at 2% year over year, and the other zip code is selling at 8% year over year, meaning that 8% of the homes sell over in zip code A, and only 2% sell in zip code B, then you can get way better leads in zip code A. So I'm gonna give you the new turnover rate calculator that I'm currently uh, working on. This is pretty cool. So this is actually in our beta program. This is in our beta program, the turnover rate calculator. Question, do I have to buy the masterclass to get the calculator? (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll hook you up. And not only that, but we teach you to get the data uh, to put into uh, the program so that you can get it. Yeah, this thing's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, it's basically telling you exactly where to advertise because that's where all all the buyers and sellers are. It's pretty sharp. It's pretty sharp. So, okay. We talked enough about the masterclass now. Let's really, let's spend the 15, 20 minutes here. If you still have a bit of time, Anthony, it looks like you're having a good time anyways. You're almost done your vodka. Wait, Um, I want to see who bought it because of the turnover rate. I'm just kidding. (laughs) No one. (laughs) They got got till till midnight. They got till midnight. It's all good. (laughs) Um, So let's talk about seller leads. Yeah. Because, you know, this is a big thing. This comes up in the group all the time. Um, the big question that comes up a lot is, hey, I just got a client. They want seller leads. What am I supposed to do? Right. I know that generating seller leads is really expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, obviously, they are, um, you know, everybody wants sellers. Right. And, and real estate agents want sellers. So let's talk a bit about why, first of all, real estate agents always want seller leads. Okay. Um, and then let's talk about what we are all seeing that's working for generating more sellers. Okay. So, or how to position it maybe. uh, Yeah. No, so it's absolutely about positioning, right? So generally in real estate, sellers are buyers, right? People, I I love when I see the question, like, how do I target sellers? Like the same exact way as you target buyers. There's no difference in the targeting, right? Really what it comes down to is the offer. Like what's, What's a seller going to respond to that a buyer isn't, right? So we have like download a free list of homes for buyers as that top level bullshit ad. But like, what's the seller version of that? And the one thing I hear all the time is like the home eval lead, right? Um, And that works, right? It does. It works really well. It's worked for years, but I've actually seen it over the years work a little less because you can go to Zillow type in your address and get your home value, right? People are getting smarter. They're getting smarter, right? Exactly. You have to have a special, a special uh, unique offer or system if you're going to use a home eval app. (laughs) Right. No, (laughs) you're absolutely right. And you do. And it's almost like you're not actually trying to sell them on a home evaluation, right? You're you're giving them a different offer and that's just what they get. Yeah. Right. So, what we found works insanely well is instead of saying, hey, what's it worth? We say, do you want to make it worth more, right? Like, how can you do something to increase the value? Okay. So like one of our reports that we have is four ways to stage your home for more money, right? So nice. like literal and it's a it's a two three page report and it teaches them all about like what you should do (laughs) taking notes here (laughs) and like you know the things that you should do four ways yeah i think i think it's four quick ways (laughs) four quick ways (laughs) to stage your home for top dollar or for more money or for more value i don't know (laughs) it's okay something like that i'm sure i'll figure Uh, it out uh, yeah just let me know i'll send you the report uh (laughs) so you know basically you know we we position our ads for sellers in a different way we we try and let them know like hey let me back this up for one second one of the most important things about a seller lead is that you almost don't want to let them know that you are an agent trying to get that business, okay? So all of our reports, everything, they're generalized, right? No logos, nothing, their agent's name and phone number, email address is there, but it's all the way at the bottom. And unless the seller literally reads through it, they're never gonna see it, right? That's that's an interesting point. Very good point. Yeah, it's not like in your face marketing, right? It's not, and it's not designed to be because we don't, 
we don't want the seller to feel like they're being sold. We're trying to provide value up front, right? Yeah. Like here, let me give you value. Right. And this goes back to, and we could talk about this for another hour, but you know, we run legitimate seller funnels where like we have three or four reports on the top level of our funnel where someone comes into the funnel and then based on the report that they download, and we, we have like, I don't know, 40, 50 reports, but based on the report they download, they're then retargeted with a different report based on the report that they previously downloaded. And then based on that report, they're then retargeted with another report. So now they've gotten two, three pieces of value from us. And then at the end, the last piece of the puzzle is 12 questions to ask before you hire a real estate agent. Right. Now, the coolest part is the, the, the seller feels like they've gotten a home run, right? They feel like they've done really well. Um, it, you know, they, they tell, they've done really well and uh, you know, they've gotten all this information about it. But the coolest part is now that agent has that information, right? They know... Anthony Mann has downloaded <coughs> the 12 questions to ask an agent before they're ready to list their home. What are they ready to do? Yeah. They're ready home. to list their home. Yeah. Right? So now when I call and they ask the 12 questions, I have perfect answers. I already know what the questions are. Yeah. Right. So when they call around to two, three people, it doesn't matter because I answered the questions perfectly. So, <coughs> you know, it's actually funny. Well, the guy I was talking about before, Alex, he's, so he, he owns a company called AsianRCircle.com. Um, it's a free agent community and, and anybody on here can, can go uh, become a part of it. I think there's like 40 or 50,000 agents that are part of it. Um, they put out, they do a, a weekly interview. A couple of weeks ago, they did an interview with uh, Stephen Swanepoel and I, I've been on there and there, there's just uh, some great, great people uh, that he gets to interview. And again, it's a totally free community. So it's very cool the way, uh, the way he runs it. But he's actually, uh, you know, he's been a big part of, you know, kind of helping us work through what sellers, what buyers want. And it's, uh, it's, it's been very interesting to, to work with his community of strictly agents all across the country and what's working in their business. So it's given us some really good and detailed information. Like I, I have a really good grasp of what's going on on Long Island, right? But if you ask me what's going on in Nashville, Tennessee, I just don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Right? But like, it's cool to be able to kind of tap his community and, and to kind of see what's going on across the nation. Um, and he's been, he's been a huge, huge part of that where he, he knows who to contact, where to contact them. Um, so it's, uh, it's been, it's been really cool to, to work with him kind of through all of this. So you basically, so when we talk about the seller leads, um, you're basically starting off with the report and then you're pushing them through Push them through a funnel. Through a funnel, right? And yeah. not, not necessarily all in one shot, but well, it's not you, even a funnel like a traditional funnel. Right, right. Thing. Yeah. So when, when we talk about funnels, it's not necessarily like click funnels and step by step. It's right, like to, 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 to push them yeah. through. It's not no. that, right? It's a hands off process, and we'll just serve you different ads for a, a, an indefinite amount of time. As long as you've interacted with us in the past, I think, I think Facebook allows us to like six months now. Right. So once you download one of our reports, you're going to see another one of our reports for up to six months. It's going to be a minute. <coughs> so, you know, and then again, download the second that, report. That last report is the question. <laughs> that last report is that I know you're ready to list right now, right? right? 12 so questions. Once they fill that out, that's the one that gets sent off as a lead to. It still doesn't, people. right? It still goes to the ISA and then they still work it. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's no, killing me. Okay. You talk too much. <laughs> Not a bad thing. I do. I talk a lot. Talk it's a all lot. good. It's all good. Yeah. So, so let, let's talk like in, in terms of um, costs for for seller leads, and I, you know this comes up a lot as well. Um, you know, everybody's talking about how expensive seller leads can be, and because a lot of us are focused on you know the CPLs, and we're seeing you know buyer leads that you know the they're coming in at a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, and then we're seeing seller leads coming in at seven, ten. You know, in some cases, I've done stuff in New York at twenty-five dollars a seller lead. You know, it's uh, it it's not it's not unheard of. You know, our, yeah. our, we probably average out around ten bucks. Okay. Um, you know, seven, eight, twelve, like average out, let's say ten. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's a seller lead, right? So through the through the, the entire funnel. Or like, yeah, yeah, through through the funnel, about ten dollars. So about ten bucks. Original generation, five to seven, and then you know it, uh, two retargeting. Dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all retargeting, right? And like you know, the cool part is like the retargeting stuff. 
is obviously always significantly less, right? So you might have an ad set that you're, you're running 20 or $30 to. And over time, you might run two, $300 over that ad set. But that lead, it, it's by moving them to the next stage of the funnel, you're that close, that, as a real estate agent, you're that much closer to making three to $10,000. Right. right. So does it, is it really that bad if you, if that whole lifetime lead cost is 20 or $30? It's not. Yeah. It's really not. Even, even a hundred dollars seller leads, probably not a bad lead. <laughs> it's like, but in perspective, right? Zillow is the $500 leads for a seller and that's for lead. That's not for, uh, for, you know, a contract. Yeah. Just for the lead. So you might have to get five, six leads before you get a contract out of it. Yeah. Very interesting. How do you feel about it? This whole, um, and I know you and I've talked a little bit about it. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we're doing on the seller side of things, especially if a client comes to us and they want, you know, more sellers, and we're still doing the buy, like the, and I call them buyer campaigns, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of sellers in those campaigns, right? And especially if you utilize the pixel and you're building out audiences and you can retarget, or you, you basically build up more lookalike audiences with homeowners and stuff. Like that. We're doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and it makes it a lot easier when you have big clients that are spending a lot of money because you can bring in a lot more data and build more data, right? To sure. Target to, or to build out your lookalike audiences. Um, but a lot of what we're doing now, um, and I'm seeing a lot of this going on all over the place, is um, a lot more content marketing. So where we're getting, you know, a lot of real estate agents are building up content and then we're using that content and putting it in front of the same audiences over and over and over again. Um, similar to how marketers are doing it where they're you know getting online and they're putting out more video and more video and they're building up their audiences we're seeing a lot of these real estate agents now doing the same thing and they're building up their audiences um in fact we have uh one person that we've worked with that you know they did 35 deals on i think it was 35 or 32 deals on instagram just by posting videos <laughs> it's just that's amazing and i love that insane, I, I right? love that you know, and that's you know, over time, what we've noticed is that the sellers start popping out and it's like, yep. you know, they build what, what I call the celebrity effect inside of a specific yep. targeted area. Right. Um, what are you laughing at? <laughs> the what? The celebrity effect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree. Right. Like it, it really comes down to that. If you're comfortable in producing video and you're comfortable in doing it regularly, you become known as the, the celebrity of the area, right? And it's crazy that that has been taught for years and years and years to be done. Yeah. Uh, and so few, so few people do it, right? So like what we've done is we've kind of taken the other side of that. We've, we've used NLP and neuro linguistic programming mm -hmm. to, you know, basically weed those people out, right? Get, get the, the right message to the right person at the right time. And most importantly, when they need that message. So you know, video has a very unique way, which, listen, this is why we, you do lives, right? In your group, right? Oh, absolutely. This is why we're here. We want people to buy shit. <laughs> to kind of, to understand. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, we do it because we have fun too, right? It gives us a good reason to, like, this is my excuse Thursday nights to, you know. Yeah, to like hang out and have a glass of wine. with the guys, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. this is how this all started. <laughs> yeah. But I, I totally agree, right? But like video has a very unique way of, you know, pulling on people's strings and, and you, you can really get to know somebody through a video. Like it's harder, a, a significantly harder through copy. Right. And yeah. that's why there's no, there's not many people who can write copy perfect. Right. Yeah. But video is different. You can get to know people on video. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. You can, especially now with Facebook lives and it's cheap. Like you cannot do this on, uh, on a TV network, you know, and you know, I, I keep a lot of the agents that I work with, I keep telling them like, this is the time to do it. You think in five years from now, you're not going to be paying for video on social media. You right. something coming. Right. <laughs> this is well, the time. I mean, they're monetizing everything on Facebook. I mean, we just, exactly. we got word recently about the, uh, the groups, groups are going to be insane soon. Uh, these really large groups. So they're, they're running like a couple different betas for it. Um, one, I don't know if you saw that you're going to start being able to advertise in groups or, or on Absolutely. groups. Absolutely, I saw that, yeah. So, and, and I've heard really conflicting information about it. Like one is, okay, you're going to be able to target a group and advertise their members in the group. Um, and I don't think that's the way that Facebook is going to play it because I think 
that's the death of groups if they do that, right? If I have to look through someone's group and every three posts I see is an advertisement, I'm you not going to be in that group. Yeah, exactly. But for group owners, what they're going to do is they're going to limit the reach from 10, 12% now down to four or 5%. And all of a sudden that same video that used to get 500 likes by the time you're off of it now gets 250. You're going to have to spend 20 bucks yeah. if you want your group members to see it. I like this. Well, so the whole, bucks, that game. the whole 20 bucks, Matt. <laughs> yeah, but you guys are a small group, right? Think about yeah, the groups. The that big got ones, yeah. Two, three, four hundred thousand people, right? They got to spend yeah. five hundred dollars to get in front of them, thousand dollars to get in front of them. Yeah. Right. So it's it's really gonna change the way groups are done. And the other cool part about the beta is that you can now charge people to get into your group or charge them on a subscription. Oh, your- through Facebook. All th- and, yeah, 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 through is Facebook. Is this in beta? You're going to take 30% of the revenue that comes in, though. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 30%. So imagine this. You have a group where you're charging everybody 10 bucks a month to be a part of. Facebook gets 3 bucks, You get 7 Yeah. When it's, does this open up? It's crazy what's going on in the Facebook realm. When does that open up? I haven't heard, I haven't heard about that one yet. Well, so, so I guess the point... Beta, yeah, yeah uh-huh. so the, the point is at some point in time, they're going to start monetizing videos yeah. and, and, and live videos and, and so on. You know what the real problem is, is they have no ad space left, right? Like yeah. they, they're trying to find space like to, to advertise, right? They should advertise on this show. They should. <laughs> Could you imagine that? You're doing a Facebook right live that. and like every eight minutes there's an ad for 10 seconds. <laughs> Don't even say that. Facebook <laughs> servers just pick that up. Don't That's say That's right. That. They should put it right, right across Matt Kramer. <laughs> yeah. Put it right across his face. <laughs> right, Matt? I am sending out links. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, well, listen, you know, I'll make uh, sure people get this turnover rate calculator, and that's why they're in. Well, you're already sending turnover rate calculators, or are well, you fixing sending, it? No, no, no. I'm not sending. That's not done yet. Uh, that's not coming yeah. right away. That's not done yet. And if you keep messaging me, I will revoke it. <laughs> yeah, like where is my calculator? If you, <laughs> <laughs> you will get the broken calculator, the beta calculator. You're going to get the current calculator. <laughs> <laughs> right. You'll get the beta calculator. You never want a beta calculator. You want the working oh, calculator. Well, listen, guys, it's um, it's almost 11 o'clock. Guys, for the people that are still watching this, we got 33 viewers still on. This is unbelievable. Uh, I love you guys. 33 still left. I love all yeah, of you. It's absolutely awesome. Guys, if you're still here, hashtag trooper. We don't have um, any We don't have any questions, man. It's just people like... How many people uh, bought it? Like, I think people know. are just talking to each other. I think we're just here. Like, I don't know. But just everybody's just talking to each other. Everybody's here. Uh, we've got um, Aaron, um, Aaron Harris... Aaron Harris bought your um, bought the masterclass, which is awesome. He's one of our top marketers in here. He's actually one of the admins of the group, so obviously awesome. he's interested. Um, Chris bought the masterclass. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I know Cheryl, who bought, you know she's another top marketer. She bought the masterclass. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. Who else here? Uh, Dave bought the masterclass. Thank you. A bunch of people here bought it. Um, we still have a lot of people on here. Thirty three people. Let me see who the last people are in here. Um, Chris is still here. Brent is still here. Alina, thanks for sticking around. Kevin Tran um, is here. Olivia, Joe. Um, You're seeing these people. I, I don't know. I've seen in my comments here. If, um, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just rhyming <laughs> off people. Then maybe they're still not. <laughs> they might not be. Yeah. Here. I'm like, I don't have this <laughs> access. <laughs> Uh, but guys if you're still watching after almost uh and well over an hour and a half now hashtag trooper we want to know dave goes who who would love to see an ad for marketers to reach realtors absolutely drop it in the comments everybody wants to see that so dave i'll give you i'll give you the the i wouldn't say the best piece of information for the night but go into groups that realtors are in and drop value Stop Absolutely. trying to advertise. Drop value. Yeah. And there's some big real estate groups out there. Some yeah. Big, big there's ones. some yeah. huge ones. Yeah. There's a hu- there's hundred thousand person realtor groups out there. Yeah. I'm cut agents. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I love those. Nah, Which I love one did you have in mind? Yeah. Uh, no. There's no. There. There are some. There's some big ones out there. 
Um, so I, I love lab coats. I've known uh, Nick for a long time. I don't know Tristan, but dude, uh, Nick's the—he's a team leader. Like twenty minutes from me. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's right, in Michigan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, no, they're he's up the road. they're fantastic. They're, so like, I, I've been a lab coat guy probably I, I want to say like to, since four or five thousand members in that group. It's been it's been a while. I've I've done webinars with them. I, they're absolutely fantastic guys. Um, they've. Uh, they're doing a great job is all I can say. So if you're not a lab code agent, if you haven't been part of that group, I don't know how they are about admitting digital marketers though. I know Travis Tom is one of their, uh, one of their admins. They've been pretty um, good. Like I, you know, I've been in there for a while. Um, I know okay. Matt every once in a while, like they're, as long as you're not going in there and pitching shit, like I, they typically don't say anything. There are some groups though, where if you're not a real estate agent, they find out you're they just don't, yeah, they just don't let you in. Yeah. Yeah. They'll boot you out. Like there's just, guys, you go get your real... license. It's fine. Yeah. I know, but I'm licensed and I've gotten kicked out of these groups because they're like, you're a marketer. I'm like, but I'm licensed. I'm interested. Right. Come but on. I'm actually licensed. So uh, no, yeah, there's... Alex says uh, real closers, real estate hacks. Um, the RE marketing. He's talking about RE real estate marketing. Yeah. Uh, out of the box owl is what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, guy, John here, still here. Thanks John for sticking around. Um, who else is here? Uh, Joe is still here. Joe Nate, um, Dean Hamilton. Good to see you guys still, you know, almost 30 people. Okay. So let's, let's wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> so, let's do it. Guys, okay. Um, motivating seller masterclass guys. Okay. If you buy before midnight, if you haven't bought it yet, you guys don't want to miss this. Even if you're not going to go out and do motivated sellers, this is something that you can just, you know, keep on the side. The recordings are going to be available to you, but remember it's not going to be available after um, March 15th. Uh, bonuses before if, uh, midnight. If you buy before midnight, Matt is giving away a bunch of stuff. His calculator. <laughs> <laughs> You say it like it's a stinking like, oh, you can get one of these for 99 cents at the store. You don't okay, no, this calculator. thing, when Matt showed me this calculator, I was like, what? Show this to me again. So he had to show it to me again and then record a video for me because the thing is just so amazing. I didn't want to forget how to use this. And this basically will find the, the, the markets and the zip codes where people actually buy and sell home so this is where you can start advertising to so if you're an agent it's awesome like if you want to focus on a specific zip code a specific community this calculator basically figures out where all of these buyers and sellers are Anthony, um, so that's kind of cool as far as getting around uh fair housing situations by targeting targeting locations uh zip codes and, and whatnot do you think turnover rate would be a sufficient uh reason for targeting specific zip codes yeah because you're not targeting them for any reason except for turnover there you go guys ninja hack yeah i mean that's it's yeah i'm excited to see that to be honest with you <laughs> uh, it's that's a very cool yeah, yeah i don't know what awesome. to say like it's it's like it's a very different way to look at it which i wouldn't even have went there but that's very cool yippers so um turnover rate calculator so if we got some big bonuses guys like this is uh if they know. buy by midnight i'm not giving that out after midnight no i know you're not i'm I sure so many messages in the morning hour. yeah you got you got about an hour left so basically <laughs> um, turnover rate calculator i'm going to give away my um roi calculator which basically figures out um the roi based on ad spend it's a great R i think it's great it's really useful for closing clients working with them making them understand what the roi is um uh like how much money they're going to actually make based on the ads that or based on the spend that they're doing she's too much wine <laughs> it's like uh, yeah it's once we hit 11 o'clock yeah it's like <laughs> that's, we just got a message it says i may have to add you and shane to my will i feel like i owe you guys <laughs> <laughs> uh the full name is matthew not matt yeah <laughs> like, i don't want to have to prove that <laughs> i don't know if you guys know that, that you guys may not know this or not but shane hillier is not actually my real name so yeah i don't think i've ever told you matt anyways we'll talk about it some other time anyways Dude, so just make sure you get off facebook with that the the you know our our friends group. i'm kidding it's absolutely my 100 my real name okay so yeah no yeah he's like put it, um, put it, put it, put it in the will yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um yeah so my roi calculator the um calculator that um, matt is given away to figure out where buyers and sellers are in specific zip codes um my um real estate guides which are um, professionally edited, professionally written, super nice PDF guides that you can edit for yourself. Oh, that's my dog going. And up. Anthony, <laughs> Man, 
Anthony Mann's dog for the next person that buys the masterclass comes with. You could have the dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're in love with the dog, aren't you? No, I am. Yeah, oh, I got yeah, rid, yeah. I so got rid of the ex. I kept the dog. <laughs> <laughs> kept the dog. And then Anthony is giving away um, one of your reports as well uh, as one of the bonuses. Yep. One of the ones we literally use in our business and our top performing ad, the one that gets us more leads than anyone else. Not to say that the other ones aren't fantastic, but this one just performs better for some reason. That's awesome. Insane. We've never given away this many bonuses on a, on a pre-registration for a masterclass like this. Well, it's so. because normally you give me time to come up with like reasonable bonuses. And then you're like, hey, Matt, don't worry, you don't have a bonus. It's okay. We'll put both of our names on the present. Just for both of us. Chris says, uh, so yeah, Chris Labarge says, uh, please take the dog. <laughs> yeah, because you know, Chris has to deal with it all day long. Like the dog just keeps barking. It's hysterical. Uh, that's awesome. Okay, guys. Um, well, listen, everybody that's watching, we still have 25 people on. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sticking around. Anthony, I can't tell you. Uh, I think this has been the most fun I've ever had. Yeah, this um, is great. This is great. I had a good time. You know, it was really good. Lots of information, tons of value here. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, you're up for coming on the show, on the show, you know, maybe in a couple months again. And yeah. uh, uh, do you guys again. want, if you, even if it's not a whiskey Thursday, you guys want a random night, you let me know if I'm around. We'll hop good. On. good stuff. So uh, Matt, any last words uh, while you're doing whatever you're doing there? Uh, no, I think, uh, let's see. Let us know in the comments below. You got, or the comments on the side, the below, whatever, wherever the comments. There's only are. two people left. All right. <laughs> Wait, there's 24. There's 24. What are you talking about? Give them credit. Give them credit. They all uh, left once, Matt. Started yeah. <laughs> like it went from 24. Oh, the link. Did you did you drop the link in the comments? People are asking about the link. So the link is motivated yeah. sellers, motivated sellers dot r e eight dot m e. So the the number eight dot m e. So if you want to drop the link down in the comments again, Matt. Uh, let's see, Dave. What Dave's trying to buy a group? What is going on, Dave? We're gonna have to mute. You. Hey, this group's for sale for the right number. <laughs> Dave's always like, "I'm gonna do business in the comments." What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he talks like that, but still. Okay, we'll, we'll drop the com we'll drop a link in the comments to buy the master class. There's also a post. Um, if you want to yeah, go ahead, drop pinned. a comment. It's pinned. It should be at the very top. Yeah. So just go drop a comment there. As soon as I get off this, I'll shoot you guys over a bunch of links. And uh, that's it. Anthony, man, awesome having you here. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Tons of value. And uh, it was actually a lot of fun. I had a great time. Yeah, here. listen, guys, thank you so much for, for having me on. I, I really appreciate yes. it. And uh, I really look forward to doing the masterclass in two weeks. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stick yeah, around. Sure. We'll, be, we'll be there yeah, in a stick second. Around. Don't, don't uh, go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now, now, now we have to wait. Don't for go anywhere. <laughs> the after party. This is where we wave and then say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thanks. Now we actually have to wait. Yeah, in just a second.